Welcome back to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life with Laurel and Laurel. Hi, Laurel. How are you today? I'm well today. How are you? I'm doing well. We are in the new year now, and we talked last time about helping others plan for a beautiful life, right? Inviting women and our listeners to think about how we might actually plan to have a beautiful life, just like you'd set goals for a job or anything else, right? So today we thought we'd follow up a little bit on that with another idea for our listeners on kind of like, you know, if you're confused about what we meant about setting goals for a beautiful life, we're going to give you some ideas in the next couple episodes. So today's topic is letting go of the need for control. Laurel, are you ready to just chat it up on that topic because, ooh, that's a juicy one. I have a lifetime of things to talk about when it comes to control. So yes. Do I. So do I. I am a recovering control freak. I will absolutely admit it right from the get-go here. Uh, right as we go into this half hour, I want everyone to know that I continue to be a recovering control freak. <laughs> you know, I bet you're not alone in that. And I... I can say I have some control tendencies myself mm -hmm. that, you know, we'll talk about this more that have lessened over the years, but more by, um, by force than choice. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we want to get into that, Laurel. Should we start there? Or should we start somewhere else? What do you think? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, I mean, maybe we talk about, you know, the varying degrees of, of needing yeah. control. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. I know. Um, so the first thing that, you know, I want to say to our listeners is oftentimes, maybe 99% of the time, that that often of times, when clients come to me, we end up talking about this need for control and our ability to just look at what are the areas of our life where we feel this need for control and how might they actually be running our lives. Mm. And so that's kind of, a, you know, as we start to look at the varying degrees, right, and the, and the ways that it shows up in our, our lives, this is the invitation we're making to our listeners today, right? So if I heard what you just said, it might have been that that which we try to control, controls us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know. I'll, I'll tell from my own personal story that when I was made aware that perhaps I had a high need for control and was invited to look at it that oh i was really i was truly startled at the ways that i felt that i wanted control whether i was actually you know trying to make it happen or not i still felt the need for control and then there were areas where i really was trying to control things people, situations, responses. I wouldn't say things because I was afraid of response. I wouldn't enter a conversation because I was afraid of conflict. You know, like that's all, these are all control things. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for me, it was, it was quite an awakening to actually just begin to look at that and own that that's what I was doing. And for me, it really was a path to recovering my personal power because what I found through the experience was in letting go of trying to control things outside of me, I could start to feel myself feeling stronger and more powerful within. It was as if I was taking all the energetic tendrils I was sending out there to try to make things happen and bringing them back into center and feeling the, the result of that, which was I realized, wow, I'm the, only, the only thing I control is me. And how I respond to the world. And it it's was such a relief, Laurel. Yeah. It was a huge relief. You know, and I can see that. And, you know, one of the things that you mentioned was not saying things because you didn't want someone's reaction or you were expecting a certain reaction. Um, you know, I never really thought about that as control. Yeah. I always thought those people, and I've had them in my life, um, that say things in order to get a reaction from other people. I always thought that was controlling, mm. but I never saw, you know, my own behavior of avoiding conversations or avoiding conflict as a need for control. 
Um, but it does remind me that, you know, I always think about those tendencies as playing safe, keeping myself safe, right? Keeping myself out of conflict or chaos because I don't, I don't like, I don't like that situation. I don't like chaos. And probably the reason I don't like chaos is because it does make me feel a lack of control. Yeah. Um, and so it is this delicate dance between how do you keep yourself safe, but still stand in your own power. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like to think of one of the things that helped me to, um, to shift that a little bit was as I was looking at this topic that we're talking about and started to give up, you know, my control and realized it did produce a sense of security, a sense of stability, a sense of um, uh, uh, expectation, you know, about mm. what was going to happen that felt, felt more, more controllable to me, right? Was I realized it was really an illusion. So I, I started to call it the illusion of security, the illusion of control, the illusion of safety, because really what it was doing was creating kind of something on the outside that wasn't even real. It was like manufactured by me. It wasn't mm -hmm. authentic. Mm -hmm. And I instead was internalizing and carrying the insecurity through that need for control. Like, if I let go of the need for control, suddenly I felt insecure. I felt lack of confidence. I felt unstable, right? And so to give it up, I had to find that stability within, right? And that security within. And that's, yeah. Weird. That's a big. And that ties back into the self trust. I mean, that we've talked about before, but, but really, you, you have to practice living in uncertainty in order to trust yourself that you're capable of living in uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so you know, letting go of control doesn't necessarily mean just, um, you know, I, I often think of the need to control that shows up in what I would call tidiness or, you know, being particular about how the laundry is folded or how the <laughs> bath towels are hung, right? <laughs> I can give you a long list of examples, Laurel. It's one of my, it's one of my pet, you know, problems. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally and so that, you know, that is the need for control, but I guess, you know, digging into it and understanding why that is a need is, yeah. you know, um, and what happens if the laundry isn't folded the way that you want? Right. It doesn't right. really matter. It's such a worthwhile, it is so worthwhile and we're laughing about it. And it is kind of silly when we, when we really are able to look at it. and thank goodness we can laugh about it. I mean, we want to laugh about it. We don't, we want to be able to laugh at ourselves. That's one of the things about the beautiful work, right? Is to, when we see this aspect of ourselves, right? Like I, I love a clean, shiny countertop in the kitchen, right? So, Hey, why do I like it? Okay. I really have done a lot of work examining this Laurel. So I want to say to people, it's a worthwhile pathway to look at because one of the things I've learned about myself is my tidiness has to do with my desire for beauty. And I respect that. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good that I desire beauty around me like that that I've come to terms with that as being a good thing, right? Because beauty yeah. creates, creates harmony and loveliness in the world. And so I, I feel like it's a positive as, you know, uh, attribute, shall we say. Yeah. And yet if it's taken to its extreme, right? I can make myself miserable living with somebody who doesn't really care if the countertop is shiny, right? And so I have to, what I've learned is like, make it shiny, you know, maybe after I've cleaned the house, maybe once or twice a week and like, look at it, enjoy it. And then the rest of the time when it's not perfect, who cares? Right. It's what it is. And so it's like, it's like fulfilling my beauty desire, but also letting go of like, I don't want to tell my husband, clean up the countertop every time you, you know, make a mess. It's like, he knows what I like. He does a pretty good job, but he's never going to do what I do because he doesn't care like I care. <laughs> and 
<laughs> you know what he likes and he likes not to clean up the counter every time. Right. right. But like, there, there's, you know, the word harmony, when you were talking about it, right. Your desire for beautiful things and beauty, you know, beauty in your life brings harmony. Mm. Well, letting go of control in situations like you just gave as an example, that brings harmony. Yeah. So what, what I was thinking is that, you know, we have to identify what is the need for control? How does it show up in our life? What's the root cause? Why do we want that? Yes. And if it's harmony you want, where else can you get harmony? Yeah, yeah, yes. And also, how can that be a positive in, in whatever that particular experience is, right? How can you find it? in that experience what is the pathway that would get you there right so for me it's like just enjoying the beauty of the beauty while it lasts not having it to be lasting every moment of every day it's it's a it's, you know this is a place where it's a working space it's not a it's not a altar <laughs> you know it's like so, i mean it could be but it's not <laughs> i love altars everywhere in my house and um and and yet the pathway to that right if i hadn't examined that really closely and let myself truly tune into and own what it is that I love about it, but I wouldn't have recognized it as part of my desire for beauty mm. and that it's an okay thing. Like I, I don't need to judge myself, right? For wanting a clean countertop. Cause that's right. the other thing. When we start to look at all of this, it's really easy to get into a space of judging ourselves, right? Oh my God, why do I do that? Why do I do that? Why do I do that? What's wrong with me, right? It's like, wait a minute, there's nothing wrong with you, right? This is just habits and patterns that we've developed. So, you know, to be able to look at it, like you said, follow that thread, you know, why do we want that? And and then find how it how it can provide a piece of that for you, right? Or what the pathway might be to lead into that space. like. You know, if, if you're always arguing with somebody in the house about the countertops being clean, it's not going to provide harmony. Absolutely not. <laughs> and you know, when, when you mentioned that we were laughing about this, you know, it brought a smile to my face as you were talking about that, because one of the things that I now recognize in this moment as you're talking is for years, my decorating of a Christmas tree was methodical, slow, Right. And when my children were little, they would decorate with me. We'd decorate the tree. They'd go to bed and I would rearrange it. Around, rearrange it. <laughs> and when they got to a certain age, you know, probably middle school, I don't really remember, but that's about the right time. They started saying they weren't decorating the tree with me. And I had this vision of, you know, this merry afternoon holiday music, decorating a tree together, all the things. You know, the whole thing. <laughs> and one of them said to me, well, you're just going to rearrange it after we go to bed. Called you out. Called Completely. You out. And what I realize now in this moment that, we, so for years I've decorated my tree alone. Wow. And, um, I enjoy it, but I don't enjoy it as much as the vision that I once had of it being a family affair. Yeah. And so what I realized in, in, as you were speaking is that, you know, my need for perfection, control over how the ornaments are placed on the tree, robbed my holiday experience with my children from me right yeah. and so maybe that too for our list listeners as you start to unravel what is where does your control tendency show up and and what are they robbing you of so beautiful laurel oh wow you know that I'm, I'm so glad that example came into your mind because that's a really powerful example of why we surrender the need to control, why we learn to let go of it, right? And it isn't that we aren't ever going to control things, you know, clean the countertop anymore. It's not about that. It's about the compulsion, you know, that inner, I need to make this happen. And if I don't, there's a problem, right? Mm. Something's going to blow up 
and and to be able to look at what that fear is to be able to loosen up to be able to surrender to experiment you know for me it was a lot of letting go of you know going to bed with dishes in the sink oh let me see that's i can't do that i can't do that oh wait a minute maybe i can do that you know let's give it a go and let's see how you feel right <laughs> and, and doing it and realizing life goes on life goes on nothing's falling apart nothing bad happened nothing disastrous right like to, to do this is such a beautiful journey of of freedom to me it was freedom i mean that i don't know how you feel about you know letting go of control but for me it's like freedom after freedom after freedom i would agree with you but i am I may have more control tendencies than I admitted an hour ago. <laughs> I, I was thinking, I don't know. Can I go to bed with dishes in the sink? I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'll try that. Yeah. Well, just <laughs> I'm going to report back as yeah. my family starts saying, what is happening? <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I, and I will say to listeners, do I go to bed with dishes in the sink? No, I don't. But could I? Yes, I could. And did I? I had to prove to myself that I could. And then I could wake up and go, oh, dishes in the sink. Uh, that's not how I want to start my day. You know, and I did it for a little while just to show that I don't have to do it to prove to myself it's it's unimportant, right? Like yeah. if I'm if I'm walking around the house and I have the flu and I happen to walk into the kitchen and I see dishes in the sink, I need to be able to just go, who who the heck cares? <laughs> right. Go back the, to bed. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I think that's an important distinction is that, you know, going back to the harmony of, of if our behavior is bringing us something that adds value to our life, then by all means, you know, it's, it's a, it's a positive outcome producing behavior. Right. Yeah. Um, but if it is interfering with, something that we want in our life, or if it brings conflict. So, you know, I would give the example of, you know, if I want a loving, fun relationship with my husband, but his behavior of not being as in control of household duties <laughs> as I am, you know, if, if that interferes with having what I want, then I really do have to decide which is more important to me. Um, you know, is it important that my house is neat and tidy or is it import more important that I have a fun, loving relationship with my husband? Um, but it does make me also think about in times of crisis, we let go of control. And I can give the example of when um, my mother had cancer and, um, I had started a new job. I was newly divorced my, and my mom had cancer and life was a little chaotic for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I let go of a lot of control during that time mm -hmm. because I really didn't have the bandwidth yeah. to maintain the control over everything that I once did. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, maybe that's a question to our listeners too. When push comes to shove, what, what control are you willing to, you know, surrender to or relinquish, right? Yeah. What, um, what are you willing to let go? And could you practice that letting go in a time that isn't crisis? That's great. That's great. And what is the benefit of doing that? Right. And so if you, I, I love that you brought up this example, Laurel, and that we brought it up to, to look at through this lens, because I see this as so powerful for us and powerful for many women to really take a hard look at this depending on what their lives are like right but when you give up the need for control you give yourself bandwidth you give yourself mm. energy you give yourself space you give yourself some time you know you 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 recover more of self more of authentic life force energy right and then what are you going to do with it Right. And so for many of us, right, when we come to the place where we start living into our soul's calling, we start living into our heart's desires, we start getting in touch with all of this stuff and these these desires and these these, um, you know, internal pulls start start creating force right within. It's like, oh, I'm being called to do this. I'm being called to do that. Well, guess what? 
you're not going to have time to do all of that if you're doing all the other stuff too. And so to learn how to make bandwidth, right. And go, I need to let go of my need for having a house need all the time or clean all the time. If I'm going to go have a study in goddesses, right? Because that's suddenly what I realized I need to learn about the goddesses. I need to know about them. Right. I need to, I need to whatever. Right. It's like, Oh, well, if you're gonna have time for that, something's probably got to give. And so to see it clearly as a choice, right? Yeah. The things that we're choosing to control or spend time on or whatever, all of it's a choice. All of it is a choice. And yeah. to be free to make those choices and not be compulsive and compelled to do these things that maybe don't fit for the time of life we're in or 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 month six month period while we're studying the goddesses right it's like uh, yes let's let go let's let go of control of the other things yeah you know i think i've uh, heard this um said before but you know the the um the question of you know will it matter in a year from now will it matter at the end of my life and those are really good questions when you find yourself in a situation where you are in, you know trying to control an outcome, another person, you know, whatever that might be, your surroundings. Um, asking yourself that future question, is, is this important to my future self? Yeah. Maybe it's not important to your future self. And if, if it's not going to matter a year from now, is it something that you can loosen up a little bit on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I want to, I just want to take a quick um, minute to, to speak into, you know, I think that in our culture um, and where we are right now, you know, and the ways that, that people are encountering, I mean, we've had so much fear-based living and thinking and way of doing and being in the world in the West, especially in the Western world instilled in us that there's these rising levels of anxiety in this past year with all the things that have gone on in the world between the pandemic and, you know, racial, racial conflict or uprising, you know, the, it's just all these things, right. That are producing higher levels of anxiety in us as a culture at large is recognizing like, if I can't, if I can't walk, by my my rug without lines of you know vacuum lines in it because it makes me feel out of control like this is a sign that maybe some anxiety issues are going on there right like i really need to like tune into what this might mean about my internal state and and what am what am i trying to manage here what am i really trying to manage here because as we have these rising level of anxiety, we need counter, you know, counter activities to, to allow us to, you know, let go of the anxiety to learn how to work with it proactively. And vacuuming is not going to be the trick. It's not going to be the ultimate thing that's going to make you feel better. It really isn't. It might be a, a quick fix or a way to feel in control for a moment, but it's not the lasting thing that helps you understand how to how to manage anxiety and fear and the underlying emotional experiences of your life. Like that's other skill building mm. stuff, you know? So I just want to speak into that for, for any listener that feels like, wow, I, I really have control issues or I, I really, I couldn't stop doing that because if I did, I'd feel like I'd have a panic attack. Right. It's like, it's okay. If it's okay that you're there, if that's where you are, but don't stay there because you know, that not not managing it in that way isn't the end. It's not going to get you out of out of whatever you know horrible anxiety that you're experiencing. Ultimately, it's only postponing it. So, um, yeah. So right, you know, it, it, it. Yeah, it's masking it, right? And uh-huh. so, so I think that's an important um, you know part of the unraveling of you know examining what are your tendencies and and what's the cause of those tendencies and if if they are, if your control tendencies are simply to mask, you know, other fears or anxiety, then, you know, you're right, there are other tools to manage those. And what can you do, I'll say in concert, as you learn to give up a little bit of control, maybe you control a little bit less, but you, you know, meditation might be one of them, or sharing your fears with a loved friend might be, you know, a way to balance the fear. 
Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it's and and if you haven't considered going to a counselor or working with a coach or somebody and there's so many online things to listen to now, there's so many opportunities. I would I would say um, I'll give a shout out to um, it's Insight Timer. I often recommend um, that to clients that, uh, you know, are experiencing anxiety, trouble with sleep, whatever. Insight Timer is just a great app. It's got loads and loads endless amounts of guided meditations from short to long variety different varieties of things from dealing with anxiety dealing with lack of sleep you know all these kinds of issues and um beautiful guided meditations to help support that so i would yeah. point people in that direction for an immediate um you know way to start building your skills and and start learning how to holistically begin to approach some of these topics because they're scary topics to approach when you yeah. really have anxiety and it's it's in full bloom it's a scary thing it's it's mm -hmm. frightening you know so um yeah to just begin to face it head on and begin to um you know weave in right just like you said you know it's okay to keep vacuuming right we're not telling you don't do it because it's it's unhealthy right where it's like it's okay to vacuum but but if that's the only thing that you have to help with your your anxiety, it's not going to be the thing that's really going to solve your, your, your deeper issue around all of yeah. that. So, so yeah. You know, one of the resources I love is um, Dan Harris's book. And it, there's also a, an app now 10% happier. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that um, really gave me a whole different, uh, yeah, I'm, I guess, perspective about him and who he was suffering from anxiety, you know, while he was on camera in front of the world, being pulled together and articulate and reporting on, you know, all of the world events. And um, that app, 10% Happier, is a good one as well. Yeah. There's several. We can put those in the, the show notes today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So what else coming up for you, Laurel? Did we get to your topic? Because I feel like we opened up with something about feeling like you ended up <laughs> Kind of being forced to let go of oh sure sure so i feel like you we know, didn't catch that thread and maybe that's a thread <laughs> that we could add in here before we close out <laughs> well i think you know um the key to that was really making decisions on what am i getting from this and and is it worth sacrificing my need to control in order to get something else i want but you know i have i said i had a lifetime of experience with change and um, you know, I think there was some control issues in between my, in my first marriage, between my husband and I, you know, he, we were both strong personalities and I ended up often taking the back seat to that, uh, in that relationship. And then my youngest daughter has a very strong personality. She's very determined. And, um, and my, my husband, Ken, my second husband, he is a very determined person as well. And so, I have kind of looked at my control, my need for control has diminished because of the relationships I'm in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, really it was a trade-off. Yeah. Uh, or it, it might have started even when I was younger as, you know, that, that saying about too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, you can't live in a family of four and three of you be control freaks. It's not a good mix. <laughs> So, you know, um, maybe I was control controller number three um, because I, I chose to give, you know, to be less controlling in order for harmony. As you mentioned that word, I probably never thought of it as harmony before, but those relationships were important to me. Mm. Um, and so I could relinquish some of my own need for control. Mm. Um, and I think that's important to know you know, what do you, you know, what can you, what can you bring into your life if you're willing to take controller number three um, <laughs> status? Right, that's right. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and I think that it, this is true with control. Um, you know, I like calm. I don't love chaos. Um which is probably another topic for another podcast. I mean, I loved chaos when I was working for an electric utility in storm duty. Mm -hmm. I loved storm duty. Wow. It was crisis yeah. and chaos. And I thrived in that environment, but I had authority. Right. And so, 
in my personal life, I love calm. I love chaos. I like, uh, I like my home to be a certain way so that I, my mind can rest and relax. And, but I think, you know, in every relationship, in every life, we have things where our control comes up and, and makes itself known. And that is what I have grown to learn to do is decide is the benefit of that control keeping me from having something else I want, or is it bringing more joy and love into my life? Right. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. so, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, I still, you know, when we, you know, I read a lot about surrendering and I pray almost every day for, to learn how to surrender. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's something to be said for that in that, you know, we live in a world that we can't control everything. There's a lot of uncertainty every day. And we fool ourselves into thinking that we're in control mm -hmm. as a way to manage the, you know, the, the stress of uncertainty. But being so focused on the outcomes and control, I think it lessens our ability to see opportunity in an uncertainty, right? Yes, I agree. And so, you know, even at home, maybe there's a better way to hang the towels in the bathroom that I haven't discovered yet. <laughs> and I will never discover if I continue to do it my way. <laughs> That's great. Well, Laurel, I have a feeling that we could probably talk um, for another, you know, two hours on this topic without missing a beat mm. because I feel like it's such a rich topic and so much to say. So maybe we'll come back and do a part two later in the year. We'll see. Um, Laurel questions yes. for our listeners any follow-up things that we maybe haven't i know we had some other questions in here kind of embedded in this mm. um time but any uh, anything else coming up for you uh you know to invite uh, our listeners to to do some beautiful work here and do some self-reflection well i think you know go, knowing that you know this ties this topic ties into creating the life you want in the new year Right. So um, maybe the question to ponder is what control in the past or what in your what in the past have you done out of a need to control that didn't prove itself worthwhile? And right. Mm, wow. Yeah. And maybe you know, is there an area that not to repeat, you know, some control tendencies that you've used in the past that were not helpful? Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. What, what, what did you learn, you know, from that past? Right, right. So, right. You know, so you don't, you, you, you're clear in not repeating it again, right? It's, and it's one of the ways to um, learn how to consciously let go of control, right, is to be able to see it for what it is acknowledge it for that and not have it be kind of there and subconsciously i'm just going to repeat it again so i love that that's great yeah that's great yeah what about you i think what's coming up for me is um you know for anyone really wanting to dig into this topic and ready to get serious about it and and feel the freedom of of what what the what the beautiful work you know can be the result um is to look at the places where you know right now you have a high need of control. And then let yourself answer, what is the worst thing that could happen if I let go of control? And really, you know, do some journaling, do some writing, really acknowledge like, because I think that question helps us get to the underlying fear of what what's going on here, you know? And also then to be able to look at the bigger picture, right? So if that worst thing happened, well, what does that even mean? You know, and maybe again, you see the illusion of it all just by exposing that. So um, I think that's a worthwhile path. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. You know, um, I used that exercise of what's the worst that could happen a lot with my oldest daughter as she was growing up. Um, and I wasn't satisfied with the answer of what's the worst that could happen. Because the first thing that comes to mind when you say the worst thing that could happen is this, but then you ask yourself, and, and then what, and then what, and then what, and then what, because 
Beautiful. Oftentimes, the what we grab onto as our perception of the worst thing that could happen, really, when you break it down, is is manageable. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and I think our listeners will find that that they have the skills and the capability, the yeah. capacity to be able to manage all of the and 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 and. And what I love about that too, Laurel, is in that pathway at all those and junctures, it's an opportunity to see where you might be giving up your power, mm. which is a beautiful thing, you know, to begin to acknowledge woven into there, because this is truly a pathway to regaining our power. I can speak personally from that and professionally. You know, I watch my clients all the time as they give up their power and see, oh my gosh, the world didn't end and my relationship's still intact and blah, blah, blah. Right. It's all okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. good. Beautiful. Beautiful. So beautiful. good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Laurel, for being with me today. And let's make sure that we invite any listeners that don't know that we have a closed Facebook group where you can come if you'd like to be part of it. We do follow up with our podcast topic of the week. We ask some questions. We usually do some lives. And, um, you know, Laurel and I are both in there chatting it up on the topic. So come and join us and get, get in and dig in with us even more. Can't wait to see our listeners in that place with us. Yeah. So if you're a Facebook user, just come on over, request an invite, and uh, we'll connect with you. Okay. Okay, Laurel, we'll see you next week for more beautiful work, beautiful life. I'm looking forward to it already. Me too. Bye for now. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.